Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about a pack that I've been using for the last two years. And uh, I think I've hit a point where I can give a good assessment of it. So that pack, if you haven't already read the title of the video, is this guy right here. Now this is a Condor Outdoors three-day assault pack. It's a well-known pack. It's been around for a long time, about a decade or so now that this pack has actually been around and it's got a lot of good things going for it it's got some not so good things going for it and uh we're going to touch on all of that today so first off let's get into the specs of, the, of everything so this pack as it comes and, and i just weighed it right before the video is 5.3 pounds so it's a pretty hefty pack um and I think a lot of it has to do with how thick the material is and all the additional stuff that is incorporated into this. But as it is empty with nothing in it, aside from what comes with the pack, it's going to weigh in at 5.3. So that's already 5.3 pounds added onto whatever it is that you're going to put inside the pack. So now this, they call it a three-day pack, but it's a lot larger than a three-day pack. This one in particular, let me see if I can adjust this video down a little bit more there we go so it's a 50 liter liter pack or 3051 cubic inches so that is a very large pack considering that most three-day packs are going to be between 40 and 45 liters so you think that that additional 5 to 10 liters is going to be a whole lot but in actuality it does add quite a bit of room and uh, that can be a plus and a negative, and I'll touch on that later in the video. So overall, this thing comes with, put that like that for now. This comes with seven compartments. So you have the, the actual dimensions of this pack. It's 22 inches in height, 17 inches wide, and 11 inches deep. Now, I already mentioned that there's seven compartments. So you have a large main compartment, which is this zipper right here. So you can open this up. This is one of the cons that I'll talk about. See me struggling with the zipper a little bit. It's a very large main compartment. Now the main compartment diameters are 22 inches tall. Uh, 12 inches wide and 18 inches or eight inches deep so it's a very large pack not as deep as you think it would be for the for the main compartment but it's a very large pack it's got these nice retention straps here so that if you want to put something on the back here that's going to be one of the least used items you can strap it down cinch it in so that there's no type of movement whatsoever you also have these loops in here that you can use to add additional cordage to fasten certain things and you also have some straps right here with velcro and that's going to be either for antennas or for your uh your hydration bladders if you cho chose to route it that way so main compartment or in the, the flap side of the main compartment which will go right here you have this big portion right here and let me move this out the way Inside this main compartment on the front side, you have two zippers with mesh compartments. So you have a smaller mesh compartment here and then a larger mesh compartment here. And that does come in handy. I've used it quite a bit, um, but again, it's only mesh. So it's not meant to put like a lot of heavier items or anything like that or anything that could potentially cause this to rip open. Even though I've had just E2's E or entrenching tools without its uh, casing in these and it never ripped anything so pretty good compartment uh, nice thing about this main compartment is you have two sets of zippers not just one set of zippers two sets so you can open it like I did traditionally from the top and then open it down both sides or if you have something at the bottom of the pack you want to access you can actually open it from the bottom so you have additional zippers at the bottom on both sides so you can open it either from the top down or from the bottom up so very nice features 
uh, zippers are very, very smooth. I believe they're YKK zippers and uh, they're very nice. Uh, this is the issue I have with the zippers and that's these flaps are very thin. So they fold up easily or they get caught up in the zipper. I wish these were just a little bit thicker so that they would move out of the way while you're zippering uh, or unzippering the, uh, the main compartment. Uh, and that's gonna be the same thing going throughout the pack. Now, the secondary compartment, which is the, the basically the medium compartment, is this guy right here. Now this medium compartment is 16 inches tall by 12 inches wide and 11 inches deep. And as you can see, it's more of an admin pouch. So you can add stuff in the big pouch here, but you have pouches here for pens, chem lights. Uh, you can stick a magazine in here or radios in here. And then you have like folder type admin, uh, main admin pouches here for paperwork, documents, stuff like that. Uh, really nice stuff. And again, you have this material in here that's kind of, uh, I don't want to say waterproof, but maybe water resistant. I, didn't, I never had any issue as far as rain or any type of moisture getting in the pack, but that's a nice feature to have. Now, your third compartment is going to be right up front here. You have this vertical zipper, and then you have this, this pouch. It's just an open pouch here. Usually, I kept uh, medical supplies in here and my uh, wet weather gear so it was easily accessible. Now this outer compartment here, uh, they don't give you actual dimensions. However, I took measurements and the measurements came out to be 16 inches or six inches tall by nine inches wide and two, and, um, I'm sorry, 13 inches tall by 12 inches wide and three inches deep. Now, because it's flexible material, it can expand a little bit deeper or wider, um, depending on how how the other compartments are configured with items, but that is what I was able to measure it out. Now, that's three of your compartments. Down below is your bottom compartment, with, which would be your fourth compartment. And it's a nice little compartment because it gives you a spot to put quick access items in. So this bottom compartment is six inches tall by nine inches wide and two and a half inches deep. And inside, as you can see, there's some co additional compartments within that are mesh. So you got mesh with dividers in between with an elastic top. So if you wanna put stuff in here, this elastic top will keep it from kind of popping out while, while under movement and whatnot. And then up here you have another co uh, mesh compartment with a zipper. Again, another YKK zipper. Nope. You have two side compartments. So that would be five and six for your compartments. You have these two side pouches that are integrated and they're just open deep compartments. Uh, measurements or the dimensions for this are nine inches tall by five inches wide and two and a half inches deep. However, um, I've put full uh, one liter containers in here and I can zipper it up with and still have just a little bit of, of additional uh, room in there. So it's nice and you have it on both sides. Those outer compartments are covered in Molly as you can see here on both sides. And then the outer compartment and the bottom compartment is covered in Molly as well. Uh, for the last compartment, it's actually gonna be your hydration compartment, which I think is pretty cool and unique feature for this guy. So you have this zipper that goes, I don't know, maybe about a third of the way around. And what you're gonna have in here is you're gonna have this, this uh, stiffener that goes in here and then you will you can fit up to two three liter bladders in here if you so choose. And then you have means with this hole here and also additional Velcro strapping so that you can route your hoses for the uh, for the bladders. So plenty of storage room and compartments. Pretty cool. Moving on, you have two heavy duty straps, shoulder straps that are very padded. Um, on these 
these straps you have quite a bit of molly so you have one one strap going vertical with that has molly slots and then you have these d rings on here as well with a test strap using a QD buckle and then down below you have quick disconnects using QD buckles on both shoulder straps <clears throat> up top on the shoulder straps here you have these additional heavy duty straps that are um, meant to beef it up because being a 50 liter pack you can really really pack this thing I've had this up to 60 pounds with with no issues um, but as you can see the stitching is done very well very robust stitching everything is is done pretty well on this pack and i know that condor tends to get a bad rap because you know they're a, a technically a budget minded option that that comes from china they do make uh they do have a couple lines where everything is is 100 american made um but that's not this product this is from china and it's it's actually a very well done um pack uh continuing on we have let's see where did i leave off on you have three heavy duty carry handles so you got this top one here and then you got two side carry handles that are all very very uh well done they're super heavy duty and they got the really good bar tack stitching and and it's done really really well again i've had this thing loaded up to 60 pounds probably more and I've used all three of these handles to, to pick it up, sling it around, throw it in, into my car, whole nine yards. And I never heard anything pop, like a stitch pop or anything like that. It just always held up really, really nicely. Um, on the sides here, you have compression straps. So you have four in total, two on each side. So you got compression strap with QDs on both sides here. And a lot of additional strapping. So... You can, if you have it really loaded out, you can really extend this quite a bit. And if it's not loaded out a lot, you can really shrink it down kind of like I have it here. So this is a really nice touch. And I think it's kind of mandatory when it comes to packs like these. Additionally, you have three Velcro ports. So you have one here, which doesn't flap open. It just opens up on the sides here by spreading open. And then you have one here and one here. And that'll allow you to fish through antennas or route your hydro your um your like radio cables or your hydration your hydration tubes to run down your uh your your shoulder straps. Really nice, well thought out feature there. On the back here you have quite a bit of padding. So as you can see you have all this padding here and as you can see it's a little bit pronounced in certain areas so here 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 and you got these subdued areas right here and that allows for air to travel in and out as you're moving uh, i found that to actually that to actually be really helpful i didn't feel any feel like i would get really really hot or any type of hot spots because of these pads moving on down further you have this like leather spot here and then you have this kind of lumbar support lower lumbar support and you have this thick waist strap with these thick additional straps that come out so it's padded to an extent and then it, it continues out you also have some uh, cutie straps here to keep it from undoing and that's because this pad here is actually re removable this is a little pocket and there's velcro on the inside that will allow you to de detach this waist strap pull it out and stow it somewhere if you if you choose to run it like that and again you got these huge cutie buckles for the waist pad or the the waist strap there uh on the bottom here you have four connection uh, connection spots here so you can route waist uh waist uh what the hell are they called? Waste packs, or you can mount any type of like sleep system down here if you wanted to for hiking purposes. So you have that ability. And then on all the pouches, every one of these pouches, you'll see we have drain holes for every one of them down below here as well. So 
it's it's been a pretty good pack now again i've had it for about two years i've used it on a number of hikes and it's held up very well and like i said earlier there's some good and some bad to it so let me move this sheet here so i can get to my my next set of points and then we'll go from there so as far as the pros are concerned the pros are there's a lot of space the pouches and the compartments are configured very, very nicely. I am a huge fan of how this is actually laid out in terms of the compartments go and the pouches. And again, there's a lot of space. So this will pretty much be able to fit any mission set or, you know, situation that you may need to plan for or pack for. Uh, it's very durable. So as I understand from the research that I did, this is 500D Kadura, and it is genuine multicam. That's why this one tends to be a little bit more pricey than some of their other stuff. Um, but it's been very durable, whether it's been rain, snow, you know, muddy conditions, throwing this around or in the rocks. It, it's been very good, and you can barely tell that it has much usage, except maybe on the bottom here. You can see there's a little di some discoloration right around here from laying it down and a couple other spots but other than that overall it still is in very good condition um, and one of the big pluses for me is how much water this thing can hold so if you were to use the hydration uh, pouch you can put six liters worth of bladder so two two three liter bladders in there and then you also have these two side pouches where you could put a quart or even up to a quart and a half uh, containers of water in here as well so that's nice that you can carry that much water because rucking long distances really does suck and and you get very thirsty and you tend to go through your water very quickly um, so i love again how everything is configured i like the additional compartments within the pouches that allow you to organize your stuff but again there's some cons so as far as the cons it's a heavy pack right off the bat, so being 5.3 pounds is kind of heavy for just the pack. I understand it's a larger pack, so you're going to have more material that adds to more weight. Ounces lead to pounds. Uh, but I would really like to see this a little less, uh, a little lighter. One of the other issues that I had is, or that I, I, I came to dislike, is this waist pad. This waist pad and this lumbar support. Now this lumbar support is really thick. So for me, I have back issues, like lower back issues. I broke my lower, my, fractured my back years ago. This little uh, lumbar support pad here will put a lot, quite a bit of pressure against the, the bottom of your spine or wherever your, it sits on your body. Obviously this is gonna be body type dependent and uh, it, it can be uncomfortable after a while. Um, now that can be mitigated by pulling this pad out and this pad is also a point of contention for me I don't think that all this padding for a waist is necessary and it's just adding bulk and it makes it uncomfortable Have just adding these straps that you could connect here and then running it like so is a lot more beneficial than just having this pad but if you choose to you could probably cut this stitch out this, these stitches out and then run this right off of here so that's up to you but um i i'm not a big fan of this waist strap one of the other things that i'm not a fan of is the shoulder straps and this is the biggest point of contention for me now again this is body type dependent but for me there's a couple issues that i have one they put these stitches like right in the middle or you know just past halfway on the for the d-ring when this d-ring should probably be a little bit higher to allow for the chest strap to slide higher that way it's a little bit more comfortable and more in your chest and not so much more around your diaphragm um, so that's something that i would fix the other thing that i would fix is the adjustment for this now you can leave the the disc the qd straps right here however the ability to adjust it needs to be higher up here once the pack is on your back, being able to adjust this here to really cinch it up and get it high up on your back um, 
it's completely lost that once once you have it on it unless you're a contortionist there's no way that you can actually reach it and pull it back taut enough to get it to stay high up on your uh, on your back as a result, I found that when I was in, in full kit and I had my, my battle belt on, this one made contact with my medical pouch on the back of my kit, pushing my belt down, and I would start to have a lot of hip pain from it uh, after about a half a mile or so. So that's pretty fast for that to become an issue. And uh, that is something that's a, a big point of contention for me and something that needs to be addressed. The other thing that needs to be addressed is this. Now, I like this design. However, I don't like how it was executed. And the reason being is, as you can see, it mounts to here. And then you have this additional strap that goes further back. This needs to come right off of this right here. Because this is technically, even though you see this stitching here and it rounds up, this is really the top of the pack. And when you have it back here, it doesn't allow you to bring the pack high up on your back enough for it to be comfortable, especially if you're something like someone like me who's of shorter stature, I'm 5'6". Getting this to sit high up on your back and give you quite a bit of, uh, of room for your battle belt and whatnot, it's almost impossible to do because of the way these straps do it. So for me, in my opinion, something like this is going to be uh, much more suited to somebody six foot or taller or maybe has a longer torso so they can get the clearances that you want. Um, also, I don't care for how thick these pads are. I would cut these pads down about half the thickness at least and then reconfigure some of these um, some of these ways. Also, I would do some uh, horiz or horizontal webbing so that you can mount a uh, a lamp or something aren't set a webbing there and that way you have something running your shoulder which is what I typically do I usually have a lamp like right here a headlamp that I take out of the band and I'll put it on the webbing right here so that if I'm walking in the dark and I need to read a map or anything like that I can turn my red lamp on angle it down and I have it or if I need to see something and I don't want to use my my gun to to my weapon light to point at it I can just turn my lamp on and get that going uh, overall for its initial design I think it was done pretty well there's some things that should have actually gotten they should have gotten some feedback from people under use to make some corrections and the fact that it's been such a popular pack over the last 10 years is uh, is pretty surprising because there's so much innovation in in this regard uh, when it comes to these type of packs that I, it's hard to see that people st or it's surprising to see people are still buying this pack dis despite ha there hasn't been any type of uh, updating on this pack. Now, I think the pack in its core is a really, really good pack. There does need some, some updating on this to make it really, really well done and make it something that somebody can look at it. Now, I know... The price point is nice for a lot of people because you can find these anywhere around 120 bucks or higher, depending on it. With the multicam, you're going to pay higher because of the multicam fee um, and paying the royalties and stuff like that. But overall, uh, it's not a bad pack. It's done me well over over time, but I have since retired this pack because of those issues. And uh, you know. Maybe somebody else could get some good use out of this pack somewhere along the line. But honestly, um, they do have a different iteration of this pack, and it's their Convoy pack. I'll roll in a picture of the Convoy pack now, and it's about half the size of this. It's a 22-liter pack. So um, I would love to get my hands on that and really check it out and see how that goes as opposed to this bigger pack. But until then, uh, this pack's no longer being used. I went and picked up... a. Uh, USGI medium pack that was like sub 100 bucks in actual multicam. You know, this is actual multicam and they're pretty close when you comparable, compare them. This is also an older pack, so. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it, it will work. It'll do the job just fine. But for the finer tuning stuff, um, there's some misses on this that could be corrected if they were to come out with a newer iteration of it. So aside from that, guys, uh, 
if you have this pack, let me know what you think about it, how it's been for you. Um, if you were looking into this pack, let me know how this review has ref reflected on you as far as your decision making for something like this. And uh, yeah, let's have a conversation down in the comment section below so we can talk. And I love having that discussion. Also helps me out trying to get more subscribers here. So if you don't mind liking and subscribing this video, that'll help me out a lot. Uh, it helped me grow this channel. Also stick around because I am working on quite a bit of stuff. I have a couple optics that I'm working on reviews on. I'm working on another review this time it being a pistol for, for a firearm. And a couple other things that are going to be in the works as well as upcoming competitions and whatnot. So uh, stick around because there will be good, some good stuff coming on down the pipeline. So that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.